Hello, parents. Welcome to the Masterful Parenting Podcast. I'm Ann Alvarez, parent coach, school counselor, and mom of two. Do you struggle with your relationship with your kids because you carry childhood pain? Do you get triggered by your child's behavior, become irrational, and maybe even yell at your children? Maybe you want to be a better parent, but you don't know how. Instead of repeating old patterns, you want to heal your pain, become more aware of your child's needs, feel connected to your kids, learn, and learn the tools to communicate better so you can truly enjoy your parenting. If you are ready to heal your childhood pain, raise healthy, connected, and happy kids, and end the cycle of parenting with pain, then join me. Our kids deserve it, and we can do this. Let's go. Well, you do understand that whatever you're going to say from now on, then Kenan will be used against you in a court of law, right? <laughs> I'm okay. I'm okay. All right. <laughs> so just in case, you know, an avenue so happens, you you get hired by one of these people to become their, you know, child um, coach or whatever it is. And yes, that, yes. You, you know, maybe the Kardashians, they're just popping babies <laughs> right and center, right? And then they're going to need a child. They need help. Yeah, yeah. That and, sounds then, great. and then we see that you're getting famous. And then I'll just send a clip to your publicity team. And I'll be like, do you want me to release this? Because I will, you know. And if you don't. I love it. <laughs> if you don't. I love if, it. If you don't want. Just, uh, yeah, just moisturize my account with um, a couple of mil. <laughs> You know, that would be fine, you know. It's a bit it's a bit dry. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds good. Absolutely. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh... Now, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. I'm your host, Prosper Taruvinga. And today we have an incredible guest joining us. Anne, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you for asking. Absolutely. <laughs> I, I'm excited about today's show. As a dad, I think I was telling you earlier on, I've seen other parents, you know, taking their kids to the park to uh, games and everything else that comes along with it. And I can't even get my kids to eat breakfast. And I'm hoping just having you on the show will actually give me direction as to how to become yes. a better dad. So I'm really excited about what's to come. And for those that are meeting you for the very first time, I'm going to take them out of their misery because Anne is a parent coach, school counselor, teacher, and a dedicated mom of two. So she knows a thing yes. or two about mm -hmm. little rascals we call kids. Oh, sorry, those kids. I'm sorry that... <laughs> That, that can be edited. Um, and she's got over 20 years of experience working with families. Um, and she's passionate about helping parents gain confidence in their parenting journey. Well, I'm tired of my kids. And I'm really happy you're here today. Please join me in welcoming Anne Alvarez. Oh, to thank you Anne. so much. Thank Anne. you, Philosopher. Anne, I don't know if you can see the bags under my eyes. I, I haven't slept for eight years. Oh, Wait. no. No, <laughs> no. Tell me, what inspired you to become a parent coach, especially with the Masterful Parenting Program? Well, you know, I've always loved working with families. And I've been a teacher for so many years. And then I went, became a school counselor. I've, I've been a school counselor for over 15 years. And I work with families. I work with teenagers. Um, I have two kids of my own. And I was just like, this is really something I enjoy. But I will tell you that I went through like a rocky, well, two years ago, I went through a, a very rocky uh, separation uh, with my ex-husband. And 
uh, it was di a difficult time, like a really dark time in my life. And I did lean into God. I prayed a lot. I asked God for help. Um, and then the vision of my life changed uh, when my husband left me, right? My ex-husband left me. And so um, here I am now a single mom. And I don't know what the future holds. So I actually prayed. I said to God, God, uh, my life is yours now. What would you have me do? And his words were so clear. He said, I want you to be part of the healing of this world. And that those words just touched my soul because I came from childhood pain. Um, my parents were uh, abusive. And um, I, I, I empathize with children who are struggling because of my own experience. And I thought, yeah, God, you know that um, I could do this. I could help people heal their pain because I've healed my pain. Now I've experienced it. I understand what it's like. And so uh, this this is your mission that I'm I'm on it. I want to be part of this mission. And so um, that was when there was one night I had close friends over. I call them my tribe. Uh, where they all have kids and our kids all get along together. They, they play together. They go to the same school. And I decided to have them over for dinner. And after dinner, the, the kids went upstairs uh, and we stayed downstairs and we sat around the table and we started to share our childhood stories. And what surprised me was that each of my friends had a childhood pain story. Either they were neglected they were abused, they were reprimanded, uh, they didn't feel secure, they didn't feel safe with their parents. And it was such a great conversation for us to have, all of us to share that. Because I thought I was the only one actually, like growing up, I thought I was the only one with parents, like the parents I had. And then I realized after that conversation with my close friends that that was something that we shared. But the other thing that we shared is that we all decided we did not want to carry our childhood pain into our parenting and that we wanted to be better parents for our kids. We made a commitment actually that night to be better parents than our parents were to us. And that night when everybody had left and I was getting ready for bed, I thought about, wow, if these four friends of mine had childhood pain. How many other parents are there with childhood pain in the world that need healing, that need help, that want to do better, that don't want to repeat the mistakes of their parents? There must be more of us. And that is the idea of masterful parenting came to me that night. Wow. Wow. That is something else. And, um, First of all, congratulations for hearing and heeding to the calling because so many people are being called every single day and maybe they're not in a position or vantage place to actually accept that calling. And um, mm -hmm. I can't wait to, you know, get to find out a little bit more about what you then did after that. But I just wanted to bring it back a little bit. So obviously being brought up in a place or in a family where, like you say, you experienced what you experienced, um, how important is it for you to be the one person that stops that generational trauma? Because you're not going to pass on what your parents gave to you. It's really super important. Like I actually made a commitment um, a long time ago because I realized as an adult, that the way that I grew up was not healthy. Like you don't know when you're a kid, that's just your experience. That's just how your parents are. But then when you become an adult, you say, oh, there's another way. There's another better way that so that I won't be carrying like these wounds. Like my parents were very controlling. And so as an adult, I was very insecure and I, I looked for other people to tell me what to do, because that was my lived experience as a child. 
Like my opinion didn't matter. I was seen, but uh, not heard. I didn't feel like I had a voice. And so when I went out into the world, I didn't use my voice. Uh, when I went out into the world, I looked for other people's opinions. I didn't listen to my own opinions. And so it damaged me in that way. And I realized I didn't want my kids to experience that. I wanted my, my kids to feel like they have a voice. They can speak. Uh, they, their opinion matters, you know? And so I, I was very aware of that, uh, that part uh, in the raising of my two boys. Absolutely. So back in the time, you know, a lot of people didn't have as much information as we now have or were as open to the world as we are now predicated on the technology and, you know, just the exposure that they had the whole town would read the same newspaper, which had the same story of a missing child. And people would yes. see that missing child on a milk carton. And everybody at the church or in the community will talk about the same stories. But now that we yeah. have opened up and things like that, don't you think that your parents at that time were working with the information that they had in front of them? But it's true. I do believe that uh, we have been deconditioned or programmed through society, right? Society is to, values uh, compliance. Society values don't show a lot of emotion, like control yourself. You know, um, we we used to live under those kinds of conditions, and now we're learning that it's actually not healthy, right? It's we we have to express ourselves to be healthy uh, and we have to learn how to express in a healthy way uh, because maybe our parents did yell. Right. Maybe our parents did uh, spank us and punish us instead of talking to us and finding out what's going on. Right. This is this is relational parenting. This is really what I'm passionate about. This is what I do with my own children. And this is what I teach parents. I mean, I'm going to, I don't mean to brag, but I want to brag because my kids, I have never had to punish. And why, why do I never have to punish them? Because I'm a relational parent. If I want something from them, or if I am trying to correct behavior, I ask them, why, why did you slam the door? Or why did you talk this way? And I find out what's happening with them. And then I say, okay, I understand. I understand why you were mad now. Um, so what can we do to make it better? So I involve them in the problem solving and the discussion. Uh, and then I tell them what's he healthy and what's not here healthy. You know, honey, you know, what would be a healthier way to, for you to express that anger? Like, I want you to express it but I want you to do it in a way that you're not going to hurt yourself or hurt other people or break things in the house, right? So these are the kinds of conversations that we have with our kids because it shows them love. It teaches them that they have a voice and that their, their feelings matter, their opinions matter, but it also invites them into problem solving, which is a huge skill that kids need, right? Like we all need, um, how do we make things better? Instead of sitting in the anger, instead of being a victim, how are you going to make things better? Right. Because so many people just go into these things head on. You know, they are, uh, how, how do you explain it? You know, they, 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 they grow up, go to kinder, go to school, go to university, meet their high school, you know, uh, yeah. first love there, get married, and it all just <laughs> perpetuates you know, into a one long line of uh, babies who just grow up into fully grown babies and now they're having babies too. Um, but what I'm seeing from yes. what you're talking about is somewhat of a pattern break, um, which stops people from just going through the motions and stopping and breathing and actually not responding to a slammed door. Um, yes. You know, because... That's how it's always been done. That's how dad would have responded to this. Now, what sort of tools do you give parents to 
stop and breathe and not have to scrap their kids off of a wall just because they may have done something the parents are not happy with. Okay, so so um, we I would say refrain from punishment until you know what is happening with your child because all behavior is communication and your child is communicating something to you and it is your job as a parent to find out what it is like what what are they communicating what do they need right our, our job is to to find out what they need and then give it to them now the reason we have such a hard time with this is because we grew up being controlled like our parents were like you're not behaving well and you better smarten up uh, or you're going to get a spanking, right? And so so we were so, so controlled and that builds up resentment. It's actually unhealthy, right? Like nobody wants to be controlled. Like we don't want to be controlled by our bosses. We don't want to be controlled by our spouse, but yet we control our children, right? And, and that kind of, we have to break that kind of pattern and that kind of thinking, because I will tell you just from personal experience, um, because I grew and grew up in such a controlling environment, then I attracted unhealthy relationships. I attracted men that would control me, right? Because I was used to that. That was what I grew up with. But it's actually not healthy. Somebody trying to control you is is unhealthy, unhealthy behavior, right? And so we would need to we need to break that. And if we're carrying childhood pain, it, it's hard because we'll get triggered. We'll be like, oh, they said something about me. Um, that was disrespectful, <laughs> right? We get all mad, right? Well, we've got to be just like, stop for a minute. It's not about you. It's about your child. And your child is communicating a need right now. So we need to just, okay, if, if we're, we're, we can't respond in a healthy way, and we need to remove ourselves and we need to calm down and we need to remind ourselves that it's not about us. Do not personalize our children's behavior. Um, it's not about us. And what does my child need right now? That's what I need to find out. And we find out by asking. We let our child express because we're the, the brain is overactive, right? It's the amygdala, the emotional brain is not logical. So you can't problem solve when they're upset or tantruming or all that. We have to let them tantrum. We have to let them express. And then once they're calm, once we've sat with them and we're like, it's okay, honey, like, it's okay. I'm going to sit with you until you're calm. And then once they're calm, then we can say, okay, are you feeling better, honey? All right. If you're feeling better, let's talk about it. Why were you so angry? What happened? Right. And now they can start processing and thinking because you allowed them to express everything. And now you're creating a safe environment where they can share what's happening. Right. I mean, obviously, I I value that tremendously because half of the time as parents, we just end up reacting. Now, society may not have gotten that memo. And because if if the, I would be in the shop there and one of my kids just starts tantruming and I may just sit back and read a blog from N Alvarez while that is happening, everyone around me is definitely going to want me to look after that or take care of that. Now, how do you then strengthen parents to go about their processes without the effect of what society um you know might give to them at that particular because it, it, it becomes do I listen to people or do I listen to my child? You know, uh you listen to your child. Right? Because th that's your child. And we as a society have to stop shaming parents for our their kids showing emotion. Emotion is good. Showing emotion is part of being a human being. And, you know, if you're bothered because a child is crying, if you're bothered because a child is, you know, getting mad, 
then then you need to do a check on yourself because this is emotions and emotions all emotions are valid all emotions are important you know when we repress emotions that's when it becomes depression right when we're when we're adults because we were never allowed to express our true emotions and so then we carry that pain and we can become depressed right it can affect our mental health so it's really important for parents to know allow your children to express their emotions be a safe place for them to do that and as long as they're not breaking things or hitting their brother or sister right um or harming themselves then we allow them to express themselves. Now, if they are harming themselves or they're harming their sibling or they're breaking something in the house, well, then you do have to intervene. And you need to say to your child, honey, I know that you're angry right now, but what you're doing is not okay. You can't hurt other people when you're angry. I'd like you to go outside and, and, and punch, punch a bag or something or go to your room and punch your pillow. Give them another suggestion, but allow them to get it out. That's the message. Absolutely. Okay, and, and that's healthy. Oh, fantastic. I really appreciate that. And what then happens when we're not there? Well, if they're in school, it is a problem, right? Because... Um, yeah, not everybody is up to speed with like allow kids to have their emotions. But like it's I'm lucky because I'm a, I'm a high school counselor. So uh, parents or teachers will call me and say someone is really upset. Can you talk to them? Um, and then I let them in my office. I'm like, you can swear you can punch something like just let it out. Right. Just just express it. Um, but if you're not there. And it's a grandparent, then you kind of have to educate your grand the grandparents too. Like I, I like working with grandparents too, because they 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 want to do better as well. They want to be healthy for their grand grandkids. And they know that some of the things that they grew up with it was not actually good, it was not actually healthy. But you can't control everything, right? But the most important thing is in your own home, in your own environment, you are creating safety for your child to express and not shaming them for their for their anger, not shaming them for their crying, <laughs> even though you think that's a stupid thing to cry about, you know, like keep that to yourself and then just allow them to cry about it, right? Because it's their emotions and they need to express it. Absolutely. That's beautiful because once those emotions can be released and they can name them, Obviously, in the future, they can tame them. Uh, whereas mm -hmm. right now, we've got so many people in corporate uh, environments who are still throwing tantrums and spitting dummies yes. because nobody allowed them to vent their spleen. Now, you've been working with kids and teens, especially, um, you know, throughout high school and things of that nature. Do you find it difficult to cross over between your own kids and other people's kids? No. No. It's relational parenting works with everybody. Um, you can be relational. Actually, being relational will work in your marriage. It will work with your boss. It will work with your kids. It will work with other people's kids. You know, it's really the key when you're focusing on the relationship. It, it feels good when you are focusing on the relationship. Mm. Yeah. So in, in essence, it actually does take a village to raise the kids. Yes, it does. Yes. Wow. Absolutely. I have a village. I have a tribe. It's not just me. <laughs> That's pretty cool. And it's always nice. And if you've got, you know, your emotions and everything else in check, you'll be able to have those people that you can count on and rely on, which makes it super easy. Like you said, you were sitting at a table and the kids were upstairs playing and none of them were throwing each other out the balcony or through yeah. the roof. And it's all because of this sort of relational 
parenting that you've established amongst yeah. your peers. Now, while you're working with these teens, especially, you know, in, 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 in high school and things like that, what sort of insights do you bring, um, you know, from working with these kids, especially that then contribute to how you um, help parents um, have an understanding of these uh, people that have newly found independence? I will say over the long period of time that I've worked with teenagers and over the hundreds of conversations I've had with teenagers, there's a common thread, a common theme. And that is when we punish our kids, they never blame their parents. They only blame themselves. There is an internal dialogue in a child's mind, even a teenager when their phone's taken away or when they're, um, uh, when they are grounded, they think I'm bad. They think I'm not worthy. They think there's something wrong with me, right? And so we have to be really mindful that our kids internalize a messaging that we don't know about um, as a response to our behavior with them. So we, we, we have to be so careful. I think that's the way, the reason I don't punish is because I know this internal dialogue that happens. And I'd rather have a conversation with my child um, about what I think needs to change. And if you're relational with your kids, like if you're always um, put it, uh, you know, feeding the bank account, you know, the emotional bank account uh, with your children, they are going to, be way more open to talking to you, um, to complying with you, because they know, wow, mom loves me, dad loves me. Um, I really want to hear what they have to say. I really, I really want to do what they, they want me to do, because I know that it's coming from a place of love. But if we are top down, where we're punishing them, they don't want to open up. In fact, today, I was working with a teenager, a boy, and I said to him, we, are you willing to tell your mom what happened today? Because he got angry and he, he hit uh, another student with a badminton racket. And I said, are you willing to talk to your mom about it? And he said, no. I said, how come? Why won't, won't you tell your mom? And he says, I don't know how she's going to react. And this is what happens when you overreact, when, you, when our kids don't feel safe, they will not tell you the things that are happening. They will not tell you if they made a mistake or if somebody hurt them or they were bullied. They won't open up because you're not a safe person, right? Because you overreact, you get emotional, you you personalize. And so we have to be the, the safe place where our kids can come and they feel unconditional love. Like it doesn't matter how badly I screwed up. Mom and dad are going to love me anyways. Right. That's what we have to create. Absolutely. Um, it, it is something that obviously needs to be learned a great deal, especially with the mix of cultures and everything else that comes along with it. In my particular household, we've got me, the African, my wife is Italian and, you know, we've got the omelette babies that we've you know, had to, um, you know, force, uh, you know, uh, our offspring, right? So if you start looking at it, you know, my wife will come in with her own sort of different parenting skills. And then I would also come in with my own upbringing, parenting skills. And half of the time it creates somewhat of a, I mean, obviously we do work as a team in some aspects, but certain things my wife would let go and maybe I would be like ah pick that up you know that's not how we do it and things of that nature you know what I mean so how then do you coach around that sort of dynamic because there's so many different because each and every person is unique and different in the way that they were brought up so it wouldn't just be one brush to say ah just sit down with them and then they'll start telling you everything uh, I, I don't think maybe that would work with with everybody else how do you approach that sort of different um, background set up. Yeah, I have I have had parents that are not on the same page with their parenting. Um, and so when I work with parents like that, we talk about um, 
they're trying to change their children instead of focusing on the relationship with the kid, right? You're, you're trying to make your children do things, but you're not thinking about my relationship with my child. And so like, just to simplify it, we're going to work on relationship. Okay. So um, my, my, my kid it came home and he was supposed to do the dishes, but he didn't. Okay. And so like inside I'm mad. I'm like, I do everything. This is, this is child in pain, by the way. I do everything. Nobody appreciates me. Nobody helps me. My child can't even wash the dishes, right? This is personalizing, personalizing behavior instead of chat, talking with your child. You know, honey, like mom's so tired from work and it would be really great. It would be really helpful if you could do the dishes. Do you think you could do that? Like that's a different conversation than getting mad and saying, you should have done the dishes and why didn't you? And I do everything for you, right? Like that feels bad. But if you say, if you are, are human and you say to your child, like, you know, I need your help, honey. Mom's really tired. Is it okay if you do? What do you think? Is that too much to ask? Like, this is what I do with my children. They never say no. They never say no. And why do they never say no? Because I feed that emotional bank account with them. I'm always um, filling in the relationship piece, giving them like lots of love, doing things for them, uh, not showing any resentment, like really wanting to spend time with it, really enjoying them. So then when I ask for something, do you think you could do this? They always say yes. Right. So obviously, oh, right. So obviously you invest upfront uh, and obviously put them in a position where they now feel like it's part of the deal for me to continue to stay under this roof. I have to have. Not, not exactly. I want to, I want to reframe you um, because you show so much care for them. They want to care for you. They don't owe you anything, Prosper. They're your children. Don't, don't give them a job before the age of 18. Well, I was about to ask, you know, when is it socially acceptable to start charging for rent? Because if if we can't negotiate, then obviously they'll have to do their own part, you know, if... um um you know on things things of that nature so maybe you've got an answer uh to 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 that uh sentiment right there because i don't know we could start I invoicing can, I, them i can i can answer that because i have a 24 year old <laughs> okay so my 24 year old still lives with me um and he works he works a lot like 10 hour days every day He's really diligent. Um, and my, I, I had this conversation with him uh, years ago. I said, you know, mom doesn't have a lot of money to leave you, you know, but I am going to give you a gift. This is the gift. Um, the gift is I'm not charging you while you live at home. And I want you to save as much money as you can so that you can buy your, buy a place to live so that you have a foundation. Okay. This is the gift that I can give to you. And I've had friends that, they lived at their grandparents' house when they first got married. Their parents didn't expect any payment. So they were able to save um, quite a significant amount of money to buy a place, right? So the, I shared that story with them. And I said, you know, this is a start for you. And because he's so, like, diligent and everything, um, he's been such a great saver. He's been saving like crazy. But um, he was supposed to buy something last year, but interest rates were just too high. And he said, you know, Mom... Uh, it's too expensive for me to buy a condo now. So I want to pay you uh, some of my paycheck to help out. Now, I didn't even ask him, Prosper. Why? Because I'm a relational parent and he loves me. I think that's right. A, I think that's a really good um, position to be because so many parents might not have anything to pass on. But if you give your kids a great start, I think that will be much more valuable and uh, kudos to you for doing that. Now, you know, you've got um, a masterful parenting program that you take yes. 
through. Could you just maybe, um, you know, dive into what it entails and what people, uh, uh, yeah. you know, can do to get access to it? I love it. I love it. Okay. So I have a course on Teachable. It's nine lessons. Okay. So basically nine weeks you could do it in. Uh, so the, there's three uh, pillars or three components. The first component is recognizing your what what your childhood pain is, your childhood pain story. So it and it, it I say pain because it can range from anything from uh, neglect or parentification, where maybe you were the oldest and you had to look after the young youngest siblings all the time, so you took on a parent role. Or it could be uh, physical, sexual abuse, right? Or verbal abuse. So um, any range that you carry, so childhood pain is a pain that you carry from your childhood into your adult life, all right? So the first component is we're going to heal that. We're going to recognize it. We're going to know about it. We're going to heal it. We're going to tell our story, okay? Because we need to tell the stories to get it out. All right, then the second component is Wait, how do we connect with our kids, right? What do we do? Because maybe our parents didn't connect with us. And so we don't know how to connect, right? Like for me, I didn't know how to connect. I had to learn because my parents were not relational. Um, so how do we connect with our kids? And then the last one is how do we communicate with them in a way that they're going to listen, that touches their heart? So I teach actually that. I, I actually give parents the words. These are the words you should say. And this is how you're going to reach your children. Because I have conversations like this all the time with my teenagers, right? And with my own children. So I know the words that work. I know what works in a child's mind. Mm, absolutely. Yeah. And and what how can people you say it's on teachable? Would we be yes, on yes, it's on it's on my website, so annalvarez.com. And uh I have I have the link to the course there. So you can sign up for the course. And then once you sign up for the course, I give uh, actually support. So you can ask me questions. I can walk you through things if, if there's anything that you're uh, struggling with on the course. Um, so you get a lot of support while you're taking the course. Fantastic. All right. And I just want you to comment on this a little bit. See, I'm, I'm African. And growing up, we, when you get to like the age 13 or 14 or 16, sometimes, especially for girls, you are called in to, you know, like a village center, you know, and um, you are, you know, there's village elders and then they proverbially tap you on the shoulder and, you know, knight you or call you an adult moving forward. So from there, you are now allowed to engage in adult conversations, adult uh, education and things of that nature, preparing you for manhood or womanhood and everything else that comes along with that. So uh, in modern words, they usually call it like a rite of passage where we basically, um, you know, just have that particular thing which stops you from, if I can paint a picture in the Western world where from a kid, if you sleep on the couch, your parents would obviously pick you up and put you back to your bed and, you know, tuck you in. But after that time, wherever you sleep, that's where you wake up. You know what I mean? That's just how it works okay. in my world. Yeah. So, cause you're an adult. Yeah, yeah. You're not supposed to look after yourself and things like that. So, yes. And um, don't have the idea of, you know, the National Geographic, maybe those ones that are a little bit abusive or whatever. They just show the extreme ones. But that this is just like you sit around the fire, you're told everything you need to know. And it's sort of like a pattern break where people actually grow up, you know, and then from there, they now know, OK, now we need to take care of our younger ones, offspring. We can start families and things like that. But in the Western world, we don't have any of that. People just grow straight from you know, spitting dummies and yeah. throwing tantrums into people that also have yeah. their own kids and there's no that pattern break. Would you say that your masterful parenting program is somewhat of that rite of passage that then opens up people to then start taking full ownership of them becoming parents so they can present well and better to the people that they're bringing into this they're world? Bringing into this world. 
Yes, yes, definitely. I think we like if you are um, coming from childhood pain, like I had very overprotective parents. And so I, I actually did not uh, learn how to really be an adult to be independent uh, till later on in life. Uh, because of the overprotectiveness, right? And I love, I love that there's this like celebration, you know, in your culture of becoming um, a woman or a man, right? Um, I think that is so so important. So here in the Western world, the, the way here's the thing: our kids will show that they they want independence, right? Like for me, yeah, my oldest was sixteen. Um, he wanted to take a trip by uh, with another friend somewhere. And I was scared about it. But I, I was like, hey, he's telling me he's ready. So I had to listen to that, even though I was scared, right? Um, I'm, I'm so happy I let him go because he had so much confidence when he came back. Our, like our, our children will be like, I'm ready, mom. I can do this for dad. And we have to be like, trust them. Right. We have to trust them. We can ask the question just so you can be like, OK, what how are you going to get there? You know, uh, um, what happens if this happens? What are you going to do? You know, like we can grill them on those things, but then we have to allow them to grow up. We have to give them some freedom, right? Small amounts of freedom. And, and they will tell us, OK, now I'm ready for this. And we have to listen to that, you know. Um, and then you can say to your child too, I want to, I want you to know these things before you move out. I want you to know how to do the laundry. I want you to know how to cook a meal. Because these are things you're gonna need to know. Um, and that is that's preparing them also for life. Mm. Right? So the things you need, things you think they need, you help them with it. Fantastic. Now, would you say your son took a rite of passage? by taking that trip that was his own rite of passage where yes. you say he came back fully mature and now obviously you telling him that save as much as you can he now understands the use and the concept of money because we sort of let them go yes yes i really believe like i i mean i'm not african but i just love that rite of pa passage idea mm. um because he, he was ready to do this and he wanted to and and that's what we have to listen to if our children are ready they're they may they're 16 like to us it seems young like 16 to take a ferry trip and bike ride to the parliament buildings like um that's a little scary right but and i was scared i'm not gonna lie i was scared i said you better bring your phone and you better make sure that you answer my text messages to make sure you're okay and and he understood that I just wanted him to be safe, but I didn't stop him. And mm -hmm. that's what we have to do. We have to make sure we don't stop our children from growing up because of our own fears. Fantastic. I like that. And um, obviously, I, I, I want to make sure that everybody else, um, you know, just looks at this masterful parenting program, because just from talking to you, there's so much that can be learned. And also, not only learning, but I've realized there's a lot of unlearning that needs to happen in the process because, um, you know, just hearing what you're saying and how to reposition and reframe certain things, um, you know, so many people just need to be constantly on this journey. So what then happens after this, maybe, did you say it was nine weeks or nine steps? Yeah, nine weeks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We still well, have I'm, these I'm kids hoping. for the we still have these kids for the rest of um you know their lives. You know, nine weeks is yeah, it's all right, two months. I, I, you know what? I, I think when you are aware, right. like the, the the like the first step is being aware, right? So when we're going through our childhood pain, we're like, okay, I remember what this felt like when my parents did this, and I don't want to do that with my kids, right? And also our children teach us. So if they seem quite upset or annoyed, you know, then we know, okay, uh, the relationship is not good right now. So we need to figure out why. And maybe we need to repair. Maybe we need to say, sorry, I nagged you too, too much, honey. Um, you know, it's, we have to be uh, honest with our children. 
about our struggles. So we can say, yeah, we have to say to our kids, like, I'm sorry, I overreacted. Like, we're not going to be perfect. Nobody is expecting you to be perfect. Okay, no one is perfect. Um, so, but we have to be humble enough to say if we did something wrong, was hurtful to our child, that we apologize. Yeah, mom shouldn't have yelled at you. I'm sorry. I mean, I have. I've yelled, I've yelled and I've apologized. Sorry, mom overreacted. Mom got scared, you know, and she started yelling. So, uh, honey, I'm sorry about that. And then it allows our children also to make mistakes and apologize, right, to reconcile with us. So yes, uh, you don't have to be perfect. You can go through the program and you can still be learning, right? I, I, I mean, I still consider myself, even though I'm pretty good at this, there are moments I still am learning, mm. you know, because I'm not perfect. Absolutely. This is, this is, this has been very insightful. And I mean, I was obviously at the end of the day, like we have established so many people are coming from so many different avenues and with it comes generational trauma that it only takes them to be like you say aware um you know mm -hmm. of what's actually happening so that they actually break that pattern in order for their kids to have a happier existence and wouldn't it be a nice world where kids can actually uh, be open and happy and have amicable relationships with their own sort of parents and um you know then they can, yeah, definitely thrive in, in the world yes. that they live in right now. Now, it would be remiss for us to have spoken about kids and having heard about your own childhood and, um, you know, not to sort of kind of put it back a little bit and um, ask you this question. Now, knowing what you know now um, about the way your parents did and treated you First of all, have you reconciled or forgiven them or do they even know? Yes, um, I have forgiven my parents. Uh, my dad died when I was 21, so I never did get to confront him. Uh, but um, I did have like a kind of like a spiritual uh, um, encounter with him. He came to me in a dream shortly after he died uh, and I was crying because I was sad that he died. Like this is the thing with, with children is even though you come from abuse, you still love your parents, right? It doesn't matter. They're still your parents. And that's how I felt. So I understand kids that still love their parents, despite the, the wrong that they do to them. Um, and so, and I was 21. And so this dream was so real to me. So my dad walked to me like through a cloud and then he hugged me and he said, don't worry, honey, I'm happy now. And so that gave me peace, right? Um, so that was my, my making peace with my dad and also me forgiving him. And then with my mom, I actually confronted her when I was 30 years old. Yeah. And I just told her, I said, I didn't do it in a shaming way because I didn't want my mom to feel bad, but I wanted her to know what my experience was. So I said, mom, I just want you to know what my experience was, the way I felt as a kid. I'm not blaming you. I'm just telling you, this is how I felt as a kid. I wasn't happy. I didn't feel happy. You know, um, my childhood wasn't happy. Like when I look back, it wasn't happy. And so my mom has uh, I mean, she listened to me. We had a really good conversation about it. And our our relationship has got has been up and down. But honestly, now it's really good. Uh, she, uh, you know, she's apologized many times. And I even have to say to her mom, it's okay, you've apologized many times. She doesn't need to apologize anymore, mom. We're good. We're good. You know? Um, and, you know, I love her so much, you know? But here's the thing, like, like broken parents, that's that, that's what will give us empathy for them if they were, were abusive is because they were broken. And that's what's helped me is to have learned as an adult what their experiences were as children. And they didn't have happy childhoods either. So there was trauma, there was abuse. And so the cycle continued. And that is why I have empathy towards them and compassion instead of hate you know Absolutely. and bitterness 
Absolutely. I mean, there's no point in getting angry on people that, like you say, are no longer with us or things of that nature. Now, you did say you've got a 24-year-old right now, and pretty soon yes. you probably would be very excited onto the new phase or next phase, which might come in the form of you having grand kids. And you say you, <laughs> you also work with grandparents and things of that nature. Yes. What, what sort of grandparent can we expect from you? Me? Oh, me? Oh, I'm going to be fun. <laughs> going to be a fun grandparent. Oh, believe me. I, mean, I still have a 13-year-old at home. He's going to be 14 soon. They're 10, 10 years apart. 10 years apart. Um, yeah. So I'm still through the teenage years. I'm still experiencing the teenage years. I know they're hard. Um, but, yeah, I, I'm excited. I, I told my boys that they need to make girls. Because I always wanted a girl. So I would like granddaughters, please, children. <laughs> <laughs> fantastic all right now finally if you would give one last piece of advice um you know to a parent that's just been watching this and thinking and you could say that but you haven't seen my kids what would you give as recourse to that parent you know, um, I took a parenting course uh, quite a few years ago um, from a pastor, Pastor Greg. And he said, we only have two jobs as parents with our kids. And the first job is to love them. And the second job is to teach them to love God and others. And so that stuck with me, you know. So if you are behaving in an unloving way, then you're not doing your job as a parent. You're your actions, your words always need to express love, right? Because love is how you're going to make things good with your kids. And I know they're struggling. To, like, I empathize. I get the struggle. I know, like, the teenage years, the toddler years are hard, and the teenage years are hard. Those are the two hardest times in our kids' lives. Um, that's when they actually need us the most, too, so the, the teenage years are hard because they rebel. They argue. Like my child, my my teenager argues with me all the time. Right. But but you know what? It is part of their development. Their their brain, if you do any research on the teenage brain, the teenage brain has a very um overactive amygdala, right? So it's the emotion part of the brain. So they're very reactive, right? Um, and they are very emotional. So we we understand that then we don't have to personalize their behavior or their arguing we just don't engage in it and we let them we let them speak and then we we respond with love oh i i i, I see you're having a hard time you know what can i do to make it better like isn't that better like doesn't that feel good that feels good like when you parent relationally in a healthy way it feels good. When you parent from an unhealthy way, it doesn't feel good. It, you feel bad about yourself. You feel guilty. You're like, oh, I shouldn't have yelled. Oh, I shouldn't have reacted that way, you know? So try to come from a place of love and care. When you will turn things around with your children, it'll happen. Oh, I quite like that. Oh, quite you, you get what you give. All right. You can't expect love if you're spewing hate and you literally can't be drinking poison and expecting somebody else to be hurt with it. It's, it's just going to hurt you. So that's not the way to live. And I'm not condoning or encouraging people to drink poison just so that, you know, other people get hurt. But you get my drift now. Yes. And I yes. can't thank you enough with the time that we have spent on here. Like I said earlier on, um, yes, we might call this uh, an interview or a podcast, but I'm just, you know, secretly getting a consultation. And I think I've walked away with so much um, to, to, to think about and, um, yeah, start putting into play because at the end of the day, it is still our kids and we still need to show them that love. And if we're going to be, wanting them to become better people in the future we literally need to model that behavior because monkey see monkey do 
And uh, yes. at the end of the day, you know, if if we want a better future, we need to start creating it. And the only way is to, yeah, be that mindful parent. I can't thank you yes. enough for those oh. words and just that um, uh, insight, you know, and also you sharing your experiences with us um, today on the Online Prosperity Show. It's been a pleasure, um, you know, having a chat with you. Thank you so much, Prosper. I've enjoyed it. Absolutely. And uh, for those that are watching right now, I hope you are taking copious amounts of notes. If you weren't, I encourage you to watch this episode again and again and again, um, because there's so much that you would have missed out on. And I usually have this aha moments every time I rewatch something of this caliber, because, you know, people like Anne, um, if you don't get them in shows like this, you're going to be paying uh, not only financially, but in kind, because your kids are not going to be, um, you know, behaving in the way that you absolutely want to. So take heed. I mean, it's only for your own betterment because so many people end up blaming society instead of looking within. And it all starts with us. And most of us have been through so much generational trauma, um, you know, that has been passed on from our parents and things of that nature. And as Anne has also uh, agreed with me that, yes, they were going through what they were going through, but you don't have to um, engage with that. So the buck really has to stop with you because the future generations really need parents that are there for them, parents that are caring, and parents that show unconditional love. Now, Anne, did I say that correctly? Because... Um, <laughs> Good job. <laughs> Absolutely. Maybe I should start applying to come and work with you because I'm I'm now an expert in parenting, as you can tell, you know, just from this masterclass. So if you want the expertise that I've now just gathered, I suggest that you subscribe to the show, never miss an episode. And, um, you know, experts like Anne are always out here to give us the unconditional love and information that you need to be do and have a happier existence. Now, be sure to check out her masterful parenting program um, and uh, yeah, subscribe to that or, you know, join the course. It's nine easy steps that I think if you, it's a small sacrifice to pay in order for you to actually enjoy your relationships with the kids. And um, I'll definitely put those links in the show notes below. Now, until next time, I think this, this has been a wonderful show, and I can't thank you enough. You're very welcome. Thank uh, you. Absolutely. And to those that are watching right now, keep spreading that unconditional love because your kids cannot get that anywhere else. Bye for now. <laughs> Fantastic. You see, I, 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 was, I was learning. Yeah, I was learning. All right, cool, cool, uh -huh. cool. I want you to introduce the show, right? So you're going to tell us your title and your name, your title, and that you're about to be on the online prosperity show and just give us a 10 second glimpse of what the audience can expect. Okay. I'm Ann Alvarez. I am a parent coach, a school counselor, a teacher, and mom of two. I am on the online prosperity show and we are going to be learning how to be relational with our kids, how to help them with their emotional needs, and how to parent better so we don't carry the pain of our childhoods. If this podcast inspired, blessed, or changed you in any way, I would love for you to share this with your family and friends on your Instagram page and tag me at Masterful Parenting and join my Masterful Parenting Facebook page or DM me for more parenting support. And I will meet you here real soon. Remember, be relational with your kids and you will see a change. Love to all you parents out there. Let's change the world one parent at a time.